we traveled down to my great grandma's house for the holidays and she's going to be showing us how to make her legendary homemade biscuits. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting more flour in than want to go in the biscuit. That's why I sift it at the end and then reuse it. Now, I usually don't wear gloves, but I got a skint place on my hand, so I try to keep that in mind. And these are the last two gloves I got, so I got to make them do. So I go buy some more. As I told you earlier about everything, I do my cooking by taste. Once in a while, like when I cooked those sweet potatoes, I saw how long it said to cook them. And then I checked them after that, they needed cooking a little bit more, so I cooked them a little bit more. And you probably can't believe it, when I got married, I had never made a meal by myself. No way. And I hadn't, because I was the baby of the family and there was always grown-ups there. And I'd go through the kitchen sometime and they'd say, stir that pot over there. So I'd stir the pot. But as far as making anything from scratch, I never had. You knew how I had saw you it. had not done it. That's right. And I saw it being done. And after I got off on my own, I realized if I was going to eat, I had to cook. Uh -huh, right. And money was sort of scarce, so if I cooked it, it had to taste good enough to eat it. So, right. <laughs> you know, you couldn't cook it and throw it out. So. Huh. And most of the time, I don't mind cooking if, I, if I'm if i not hurting bad or something. But I think all people that cook, sister, when you've got a family, the biggest thing is... Uh, Side and want to cook. Yeah. So that was about a cup of shortening. Yeah. Would you say? It probably was, and I, with this amount of milk, I probably could have had a little bit less shortening. How much milk was in there? Or did you already say Twelve ounces. I told Joel yesterday that it was usually about twice as much milk as what they were shortening. Usually this shortening just makes them taste better. You know? how, how much of flour? How many cups of flour? I didn't measure it. Oh, okay. You just kind of... I'm doing work in ever how much this year needs. When I was growing up, people actually, the ones that could afford it, had some kind of cabinet thing that had a built-in sift, sister, sifter in it. Huh. And uh, they'd go in there to make biscuits. And they had, you know, the biscuit pan thing that they used. Lots of them had a wooden one. And they'd just take the flour out of it and put it in that sifter and put it through and make biscuits. A built-in sifter. Yep. It was made like that. Huh. And, uh, but what I do is I'll do this, and then the flour I have left over, I'll sift it, and then I'll reuse it. Does Jed want to get in the video? <laughs> well, here's, here's our expert now. He needs to tell us what to do. I'm going to work flour in it till I think I've got it to the point that I can roll them out. And now I'm going to roll them out by hand, but you could take this type of dough and put it on a rolling thing. Yeah, no, this is flour, milk, shortening. And that's it. And that's so it. Good. And you can make biscuits ever how big you want for them. Used to when it was just me and Ronnie and Jackie and Michael and Margie, I would make them bigger and just make all of us just one biscuit. But I like them. Uh, thin. I like biscuits that's fat, you know, like they call the fish, head, the fish head or whatever, but I prefer them thin with a lot of crust. So you kind of roll them up and flatten them a little bit? And she said she likes them thin. Flatten them a little bit on the pan? Yeah. What do they call the ones that's fat? Cat, cat, head. Head, cat head biscuits. Yeah. yeah. The trick is getting enough flour in them, but not too much flour. Well, that's a pretty quick little deal. 
Well, I said it just has flour and shortening and yeah. milk, but it's self rising flour. You use plain, you'd have to put the other stuff in it. Would you say these would be the best biscuits anyone has ever tried? Uh, no. <laughs> sometimes, they're, sometimes they're better than others, like everything else I cook. And you cook by taste, it just don't always turn out the same. It just turns out. Most of the time, I can make biscuits and clean my mess up in about 10 or 15 minutes, so it's not no big deal. And all these little edges and all, they'll usually just be all right. I was trying to make a few more than what I usually make because of people being here. Most of the time I try to make like about nine on first Sunday dinner. And sometimes there'll be some of them left over. Is this your original recipe or how did it pass? It was just sort of the way my parents made them, like my mama made them. And like I said, I never made them before I got married, but I'd watch them do it. And I like to eat, so I just learned how to cook in a hurry. So what's the, you're trying to make it as smooth as you can when you yeah. roll it like that. Yeah. It's almost like yeast rolls. So that was kind of a part of the, of the to make it really smooth like that. get the meatloaf out we're going to put these in and then everything should be ready to eat so that's it all righty thank you so much granny carolyn uh-huh <laughs> great <laughs> green <laughs> <laughs> green till they get brown on the bottom and then we turn the oven over to broil and brown them on the top. Okay. Hoping they'll be delicious. Okay.